Welcome, adventurers. Today on Rebel Den King, I am going over yet another class, the last of the classes, in fact, that I'll go over that relates to Player Core 2. As a reminder, I did get an advanced copy of Player Core 2 from Paizo. The opinions expressed in this video are my own. This is not an endorsement uh, or a sponsorship. And I'm sure most of you have your copies of Player Core 2 already and have seen other videos discussing a lot of the changes. So this is going to be the biggest changes to the last of the classes that I covered leading up to Player Core 2, the Investigator. Let's get into it. What are the big changes to the Investigator? All right, the Investigator will begin with their investigative abilities, Pursue a Lead, which has a lot of new text to it and a lot of change text, though mechanically it's still more or less the same, I would say, though there are a few key differences. First, I just want to talk about the organization of the text before we get into it. Uh, we now have these newly created sections for investigation bonus active investigations and solving an investigation. Uh, there is no difference in the text in investigation bonus nor in active investigations. It is just called out a little bit more cleanly in the rule book. And now onto the actual differences, starting with the way that, well, you start an investigation. When you initially pursue a lead, you still need a minute, but after that minute passes, the GM either confirms there's a larger mystery or tells you there's nothing more to learn. And then the other part that is new is solving an investigation. So the beginning and the end have kind of changed here. Uh, if you answer the question at the heart of your investigation, the GM now tells you that you've done so. If what you discover points to an even larger mystery, you can work with the GM to adapt the question and name of the new investigation to match the new information. So you can kind of slightly alter your investigation into a new subsequent investigation that built on the first one. And overall, I like the way that these changes sort of more cleanly guide you through this is or isn't important. You're working on it, you've solved it, and this does or doesn't lead to something else. It is now much more of an information funnel or an information journey where I think it used to be a little bit more like individual pieces of information that could be red herrings or could not be, and you had to stitch them together. Overall, it's not mechanically that different, really, but it is quite an improvement. And now on to devise a stratagem, and I will kind of go over my standard spiel of devise a stratagem and the way it used to work and what worked about it and what didn't. Uh, first of all, devise a stratagem allows you to make an attack roll, but not actually attack an enemy. And when doing so, you can use your intelligence modifier rather than your strength or uh, uh, dexterity for that role, which is a good thing because your intelligence should be higher than those other scores as an investigator. Um, you are then kind of stuck, per se, with that role. You do have to use that lead, the result of that check on your next strike against that target. You cannot opt out of it. Now, if you do have a good role and you do end up striking, you do make an extra action to take that strike. So it's one action to devise a stratagem, one action to actually strike, and you do get to add a d6 of precision damage. So it's pretty good when you do have everything work uh, like that. My issue has been with the devise a stratagem that, well, first of all, a lot of people would get wrong in a lot of the actual plays that I was to do. I kind of thought, if it's getting misinterpreted so widely, then how can we clean this up a little bit? And then also, I mean, it can be really quite nice to know you are not going to land an attack and do something else. You can do things like land or make that initial roll and know I'm off by one. I need to improve by one. You don't have to strike as your next action, remember, so you can then demoralize and maybe that succeeds. Now you know your strike will land. It is a very potentially cool way to play this class. However, I do think that sometimes you end up a little bit stuck or maybe there's only one enemy, so you can't speed somewhere else if you're not able to attack. And you've already demoralized or done other things. Maybe you're not a strong character in terms of strength enough. So you're not able to judge everything else. There's a lot of things you can do, but sometimes you can do So all that said, what has changed and has devised a stratagem gotten better? Well, first of all, the core part of it, the strikes, hasn't really changed. So I could still see some misinterpretations out there, though I feel like we've had this mechanic for a long time now and people are getting quite used to it and I don't see as many misinterpretations as I used to, which is great. But now we have an ability that lets you unstick yourself just a little bit when you know that strike is not going to land. And this is huge. In fact, this is something I asked for recently. What about like a secondary stratagem where if you figure out you're not going to land attack, maybe each subclass has a secondary thing that they get a bonus to, so you do kind of have a fallback option? I don't know, it's a thought. Now, when you devise a stratagem against a target, you can choose to attack it as you always would, you can choose to do something else as you always could, or you can use the new skill stratagem. You gain a plus one circumstance bonus to your next intelligence, wisdom or charisma based skill check or perception check against that target until the start of your next turn. 
Another cool part about it, if you would gain the Pursue a Lead Investigation bonus to such a check, that bonus is actually increased by one rather than just being plus one. Needless to say, I am very happy with these changes. I love that this character, this class that is intelligence-based and is sort of built around almost predicting or at least seeing the next steps of the, uh, the target that they're up against, now has a backup option that doesn't feel like an, oh crap, what do I do now backup option, but more like a, I've had this in my back pocket the entire time and now is the time to use this. Now is the time to use that skill stratagem. So now it feels like you go for that strike and if you can't land it, it doesn't feel like, well, you're on your own, make something up. You've got that skill stratagem to kind of say, this is another ability that you're good at because of your character rather than just, I think before it was a little bit like you either land the strike or you as the player have to figure something else out and you have to figure out something else out that you're good at that doesn't come from the class, maybe comes from an ancestry or your background or something like that, but now it comes from the class. That skill stratagem is a core part of the class. That makes it feel like this is a complete action, a complete ability of the investigator and not a, I hope it works because if it doesn't, figure something out. Also super minor, but devise a stratagem in the rulebook is now correctly called out as being one action or a free action. Not huge, but you know, these things do matter when you're scanning things at a glance. And now onto the subclasses and feats and what changes there are there. And you know what? I'm not even gonna cover that. I think that the change to devise a stratagem makes me happy enough that I think this is a big change to the class. There are already lots of other good videos out there that go over the feet and subclass changes. None of them I think are nearly as impactful as the change to devise a stratagem. So go watch those other videos after you finish, you know, liking, commenting, and subscribing and watching this one to the end. Which makes this a rather short video. That's it. I just wanted to cover the changes to pursue a lead and how it is now a little bit better at being an information funnel, a bit better at being an end-to-end -end process and not so much separate little investigations going on. I think that is a very cool change, even though it's not huge mechanically speaking, uh, it does make this class a little bit better at doing what they do, which is figuring things out. And then of course, I love that device a stratagem now has a second option with it, the skill stratagem, so that you don't feel quite as stuck or fishing around for things to do if your strike isn't going to land. Well, what do you think adventurers? When your device a stratagem roll is too low and you are not going to land that strike, how will you make use of your skill stratagem? Are you gonna faint or demoralize or recall knowledge or are there some other actions we should be considering? Let's talk about it in the comments. Until then, remember that Devise a Stratagem is still the most complex, nuanced, multifaceted single action in the game, or free action, I should say. And it somehow got even more meat added to its bones, which it somehow needed. So good for you, investigator. <laughs>